We're going to try to help out in left. Mercury is not there, so it's a good fight for us. We're going to ult over the wall. We're able to get the pick onto the RDO. Scotty's running away. We do have our blink. Blink. Hit her with the one. Miss the two. And we're able to clean up the Scotty. Delayed double kill. What a do, skibbity boo. It's your boy Sean Geek Gaming, and today we are doing a skin showcase for the Leonardo Osiris skin. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you subscribe and check out the channel for some more content. We're going to be doing a video for each of the turtle skins plus their radical skins. If you are a returning viewer, this game was very, very interesting. I felt like we were very dominant in the early and mid game. Once we got towards the late game, things started to fall apart a little bit. And then as we were getting pretty deep into the game, my computer ran out of memory, so it stopped recording. I was able to delete a video and then get these stats once the game ended. But I'll go ahead and give you the rundown of what happened off screen whenever we get there. So let's go ahead and jump into Osiris's kit. Osiris's one is sickle strike. Osiris is going to throw his sickle forward and a line attack. It's going to stop at the first enemy hit, dealing damage and slowing them by 20% for 3 seconds. While the enemy is slowed, the sickle or sword for Leonardo is going to remain in the enemy. Osiris is 2, Spirit Flail. Osiris is going to deal damage in a small circle. Osiris is going to gain 20% movement speed if he hits an enemy. If the enemy was under the effects of Sickle Strike, Osiris is 1. The target's slow is going to be increased to 40% and the duration is going to be refreshed by 3 seconds. Osiris is 3, Judgment Tether. Osiris is going to shoot out some mummy wraps to enemy gods that are standing within its radius. Targets hit are going to deal reduced damage over the next 4 seconds. The tether can be broken by targets moving far away enough from Osiris. Targets still in range when the duration expires are going to be stunned for 1.4 seconds. At level 1 is going to be a 15% damage reduction and then at level 5 it's going to be a 35% damage reduction. Osiris's ultimate, Lord of the Afterlife. Osiris is going to shed any remaining fragments and gain the full benefit of his passive and leap forward. Osiris targets all enemy gods in the landing area and rips out a fragment of their spirits, dealing damage and preventing them from healing. Targets are going to be rooted for 0.4 seconds during the attack. So this chalk stuck around a little bit too long, took a lot of poke from the minion wave while we rotated over and hit the totem of kill. He's very weak, one more poke should do it. And we're able to get the first blood. That's going to be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. The last ability to go over is Osiris's passive, Fragmented. Each time Osiris uses an ability, he's going to burn away a fragment of his body, gaining 2% physical damage mitigation and 1% magical damage mitigation for each missing fragment. After losing 8 fragments, he's going to enter his spirit form. He may walk through enemies and enemy blockers, such as a Ymir wall and his basic attacks do not incur a movement speed penalty. This effect lasts for 6 successful basic attacks. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1 we want to put a point into our 2 because that's going to allow us to poke the enemy god and also enemy minions. At level 2 we want to put a point into our 1, it's also going to allow us to deal more damage to enemy gods. Level 3 we're going to want to put a point into our 3. Level 4, put another point into our 2, put a point into our ultimate at level 5, then we want to max out our 2, max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 1, and then max out our 3. This skin is phenomenal. As we're shedding fragments, Osiris is going to turn neon green. So right now we have 7 of our 8 fragments shedded. Whenever we were in Fountain buying items, we put a point into our 2, and we started using that while we were buying items. We left Fountain with 4 fragments missing or 4 fragments remaining. So we just hit 6 successful basic attacks, that's going to remove our passive and start us over on our passive. Osiris does have an attack chain, it is single hit, single hit, oh Mercury's here, we're going to have to ult away. If Mercury's still on us, he just pokes us a little bit, we're going to pop some health potions, we should be good here. In terms of the build, we left with Warrior's Blessing, a health chalice, and five health potions. 
This is going to allow us to kind of just sustain, get a decent amount of gold, and then back for a full tier 3 item. The magic number we're looking for is 2100 gold. That's going to allow us to get Soul Eater. Osiris does have an attack chain. It is single hit, single hit, dual hit, or cleave, and then another cleave. So whenever farming minions, we want to kind of try to group them up and then hit the minions with our cleave. If we can do that successfully, we should be able to outclear the enemy. The In a perfect world, oh, Set's going in. Set gets the slow from his one, he activates his three. We're going to activate our three so we can get the stun onto this chalk. Set this set up. Unfortunately, Chalk ults and is able to avoid the stun from our 3. Good play by him. Good use of his ultimate. He is probably going to lose a lot of health if he did not do that. So, we're going to go ahead and back and pick up Soul Eater. Soul Eater is going to provide us 20 power, 10% physical lifesteal, 10% physical penetration, and 10% cooldown. It has a passive that your abilities are going to heal you for 5% of the damage dealt. Each time anything dies within 80 units, we're going to gain a stack. Gods, large jungle monsters, and bosses provide 5 stacks. At 75 stacks, Soul Eater evolves, gaining 15 power, 5% lifesteal, and causes abilities to heal you for 20% of the damage dealt. Typically, I would not think to buy Soul Eater on Osiris, but it works out really well if you're landing your 1 and your 2. In an ideal world, we would hit the enemy with our 1, get the melee minions to start attacking us, we'd move them closer to the archers, then we would use our 2 and our auto attacks to clear the minions. We really want to be throwing out our 1 on the enemy god as often as possible. It does not make a lot of sense to use your 1 on the minion wave. We can use our 2 on the minion wave or on the enemy god. We're going to rotate to the Totem of Ku as often as possible. The Totem of Ku is going to give everybody on our team a little bit of gold and it's also going to act like popping a mana potion for everyone on the team. So everyone's going to gain a little bit of MP5. We're just going to keep poking out this chalk with our two. If he's hiding under tower, that's just going to allow us to cleave these minions without a whole lot of pressure. We're going to throw our one, throw our two, and that's the magic combo we're looking for. Our blue's down. We should probably rotate back for that. Set's coming in. Set goes in, so we turn our attention to the tower. We're going to try to help out. Set's able to get the chalk. We didn't do a whole lot, but we are going to move to the back side of the tower to make sure that set can get out okay. Doesn't look like anybody's rotating over, so we should be able to just rotate back. Here comes the outwash. We're going to use our three. Our one gets caught on a minion. We poke the outwash with our two, and we're dealing some good damage to that outwash. Looks like they just secured their blue, so our blue got dropped and then we helped get the pick onto Chalk, or we stood near Chalk as he went down. So we missed out on our mana, which means we need to be a little bit careful on how much mana we used until we can get our blue buff up. The blue buff is going to provide us some NP5, and it's also going to give us 10% cooldown reduction. We're just going to rotate to the totem, go ahead and finish what we started. This skin is fantastic. Taking a look at the patch notes, I thought the Donatello skin might be the coolest, but this Leonardo skin is fantastic. I really like it. It sounds cool. The swords look really cool. He looks really cool whenever he's losing fragments and going neon. We're gonna use our two. So with Soul Eater, we wanna try to poke the enemy god and the minions together. If we can do that, we're gonna receive a fat heal. We're gonna go ahead and back or beta back. We're going to use our 3, use our 2, we're getting some great damage, we use our ultimate, we get the root, we also remove his soul fragment, which makes him immune to any kind of heals, it's 100% anti-heal. We're going to go ahead and clear this minion wave, our blue buff is up, so we're probably going to rotate to that before backing. Nope, we're going to back and then rotate to our blue buff. So with Osiris, you generally do not want to build any kind of attack speed because that's going to make you lose your passive faster. So long. 
gaining up to 16% physical damage mitigation and 8% magical damage mitigation can be very helpful in team fights. As a solo laner, we just want to kind of stick in our lane, get wave advantage if we can, rotate to the minions in between the tier 1 and tier 2 tower. We get pulled by the mercury, we're going to fall back a little bit. Chalk ults, unfortunately there was nothing we could really do to help out our set. I'm responsible. With two people here, we got to be a little careful on how we play it. Mercury's still chasing us, we use our 3, he's going to dash out so he's not going to be stunned. We miss our 1, we're going to throw out our 2, we get the poke onto Chalk and also finish off the back archers. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure to this Mercury, he's just going to run away. So this Chalk, we have a couple levels on him and he's just sitting under tower. If he was not sitting under tower, we would want to hit him with our one, move to the back archers, group up the minions, use our two, and then start basic attacking the minions. Anytime we get pushed, we want to use our three. It's going to potentially stun the enemy. It's also going to reduce their damage by 15% at level one. There's the chalk hammer. We're gonna rotate into the jungle. Their blue buff isn't there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and move up and clean this wave. Sometimes you can dodge the chalk hammer, other times you cannot. The skin looks so cool when he's glowing. We're gonna think about rotating mid. And we're going to use our special where we hop on a skateboard and start moving towards mid. We're going to go ahead, run in, use our ultimate, get the root onto the outwash, hit him with our 1, hit him with our 2, activate our 3. And we're able to get the pick onto the outwash. Outwash does not have any kind of movement speed or movement abilities, so it is fantastic to just go onto him because he's just stuck unless he can get any kind of peel from his team. Taking a look at the enemy team composition. We don't necessarily like have any advantage on the enemy characters. If we were going against a Kabrakan, an Odin, a Ymir, somebody with a player made wall, Osiris is a fantastic pick because once his passive is active, he can walk through those player made structures. We're gonna rotate back to our blue buff, hop on the skateboard, Jump on the skateboard, pop some tricks. I did buy the uh, Master Splinter and Shredder skins, and I was a little disappointed that they didn't have special emotes, but I get it. You only have so much time in development. I'm glad that all the turtles have the special emote of hopping on the skateboard. We're gonna go ahead and clean up our wave. So my thought process is for the normal turtle skins, play them in their normal positions. So Leonardo and Donatello, or Sun Wukong and Osiris in solo lane, then Raphael Loki and Michelangelo Mercury in jungle. Then whenever I get to the radical skins, do the opposite. So it'd be Osiris and Sun Wukong in jungle. Then it would be Raphael and Loki or Loki and Mercury in solo on the Radical skins. Then we also have a Shredder Jungle video to come out and a Hachiman Splinter carry video. We're gonna go ahead and back. We picked up the Warrior Tabai Boots. That's just gonna give us 40 power. That's really what we're looking for, that additional 40 power. It's gonna give us a decent power spike and we don't really wanna go into attack speed. I would say the one exception for this is Kin Size for the late game. But we'll get to that in a bit. So after going into Soul Eater and our boots, we're going to be going into Frostbound Hammer. Frostbound Hammer is going to provide us 25 power, 300 health, and it has a passive that enemies hit by your basic attack have their movement speed reduced by 30%, 20% for ranged, and they have their attack speed reduced by 15% for 1.25 seconds. 
So once we get Frostbound online, we're going to be able to stun them with our three. We're just going to be able to stick to somebody like Glue. Frostbound is really good if we have follow-up damage. It is not the best if we're trying to 1v1 somebody in the early game, or if we have a lead on somebody, it works out pretty well. But in the late game, we really want to be engaging on people whenever we have additional support. I feel like that's kind of just a general tip for solo in general. Taking a look at the enemy team, once we get to the team fighting stage, we're going to want to get damage onto the Mercury, onto the Scotty, and onto the Al Bosch. We're not too concerned about the RDO or Chalk. We just want to make sure that they're not diving our squishies without getting punished. So Soul Eater allows us to just eat this Chalk poke and not really worry about it. Right there we should have used our 1 before our 2, so that way we could get the Sickle Slow and then double down on it with our 2. We're going to rotate mid, get a little bit of poke onto this Ardia, but there's really not too much we're going to be able to do right here. We miss a couple abilities, we get the stun that's going to cancel out her out of her 3. Mercury is here, looks like he has hasten because he's sticking to us. We're able to hit him with our Sickle or our 1 and then hit him with our 2. Outwash is here. We're going to ult in onto the Alpwash, use our 3, it hits 3 people, so it's 15% damage mitigation for all those characters. We're going to get some damage onto the Alpwash. Now we're looking pretty weak, so we're going to start falling back. We don't have our ultimate to run away. Luckily, Sir Numios is able to rotate in, get the pick onto the Alpwash. Ardio is still chasing us, which we're okay with, that means she's away from the team fight. Sir Numios is able to get the Scotty as well, and we're able to survive. So we picked up Breastplate of Valor. Breastplate of Valor is going to provide 65 physical protections, 300 mana, and 10 MP5, along with 20% cooldown reduction. This is one of the few tier 3 items that does not have a passive. It just has really good stats. So we're already at 30% cooldown. While we have the blue buff, that's going to put us at 40% cooldown, which means we should have our 1 about every 3 or 4 seconds. We're going to rotate back to the soul and clean up our wave. We don't want to miss out on this gold or XP. We want to rotate out of soul lane once we have some pressure in our lane. We want to have minions pushing up to the tier 2, essentially. We're going to pick up our blue. And right now, if you take a look at the little passive icon, we are 8 of 8. And we have six red things. Those are our six basic attacks. Once we use the six, we're going to lose our passive. On my way. Bunch of people in mid, we're going to rotate in. We're going to blink over, ult over the wall. Keep targeting this out Posh because he is going to have a hard time getting away from us. We're able to get the pick onto him. Now we're going to rotate to the team fight. We're able to get the pick onto the Ardio and onto the Scotty. Now we should be able to rotate to the Gold Fury. We cleaned up mid, carry, and their support. We really only have to worry about their Mercury. We're able to get the Gold Fury. That's going to be 258 gold for everyone on the team. Then we're going to go ahead and back. We do have our teleport glyph as our first relic this is going to allow us to kind of maximize our farm in the early and mid game then we got blink as our second relic and i think this is a bit of a misplay once we get to the late game mercury is going to hit like a truck and i think a thorns would be a lot more helpful and allow us to fight into them a little bit better than blink we did use blink to get a pick right there so it does feel bad kind of saying it right after we used it to get a pick but I think Thorns would have been a better relic for us. We're going to go ahead and rotate towards the mid. Checking the enemy speed buff. It's not there. Can't really find anyone in mid. So we're just going to kind of rotate back to our Hades. Two people on left, we're going to rotate over. 
If they keep pushing up, we should be able to close and collapse on them pretty well. We should be in our skateboard form. Don't know why we're not. One more ability and we're going to enter our passive state. We're going to use our three. Scotty uses her beads. We miss her ultimate. Bracken's able to get the pick onto the Scotty. We hit the RDO. That's a 20% slow. Increase to a 40% slow. We have Frost Bounce, so as long as we're basic attacking her, she should not be able to get away. Bracken's able to clean up the Scotty. Our set goes down to Mercury. Not exactly sure where that happened. Looks like they're making a play for the red buff. We're going to get a little aggressive. See if we can keep poking out this Alp Wash. Right here we have no support. So this is probably not the best thing to be doing. That's a beads from the Alp Wash. We keep going in. We probably should have backed up once we pulled out the beads. Or we got the beads from the Alp Wash. A lot of damage coming our way. And unfortunately we go down. So right there, our mistake was we dove in there like we'd be able to fight two people, no problem. But we really are a great distraction. We don't have the damage and we probably won't have the damage. So whenever we are fighting, we want to make sure that we have either our Sununios, our Hades, or our set with us. They're going to be a majority of our team's damage. We just got too aggressive. As a solo laner, we are the front line, meaning that we are diving the enemy team, trying to distract and bait out abilities from the Alpwash, from the Scotty, and from the Mercury. We're not too concerned about the Ardeo Urchok in the team fight. I mean, we definitely want to pay attention to where they are, but we really want to get pressure onto Mercury, Alpwash, and Scotty. Gonna rotate to the blue buff, go ahead and pick this bad boy up. So we have been rotating a decent amount. We have not necessarily maximized our farm in our lane, but I think every time we've rotated out, we've made an impact on the team fight. So I think our rotations have been pretty good so far this game. We're going to rotate with our minions, hit one more wave, and then rotate towards mid. There looks to be a pretty big team fight going on in mid. They have all five people. Oh no, we're going to push the tower instead of rotating. Chalk's coming back over. Mercury's here. We're going to activate our two. Mercury has hasten. He is going to be an issue. Once we get to the late game... Mercury's going to be a huge problem. I would say Mercury is definitely a hyper carry assassin, meaning that like left unchecked, he could kill all five people on our team. I think Set is a strong early and mid game character, but he doesn't have that late game potential like our, the enemy Mercury. So we lose two. We're going to rotate towards our Bracken. Looks like the enemy team's rotating in behind us. We're going to get our Frostbound procs. We're going to try to help out the Sir Nunos. We get caught on the ice and the wall. A little bit of a mess right there. We're going to hop over the wall. Get the root onto Scotty. We're going to stick to the Scotty. And she gets popped at the shell. We're going to start falling back. We're going to keep running away. We activate our three, reduce the damage mitigation, use our two. That's going to heal us a little bit. We're going to keep running. And we're going to have to blink away from the Alp Wash too. Not sure if it would have killed us, but I'm pretty sure it's dealing more than 210 damage. I think it would have gotten us if we didn't blink right there. 
So after going into Frostbound, we are going to be going into Genji's Guard. Genji's Guard is going to provide us 150 health, 70 magical protections, and 40 MP5 along with 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that when you take magical damage from an ability, your cooldowns are going to be reduced by 3 seconds. This can only occur once every 30 seconds. Attack the Gold Fury! I make the call to go for Gold Fury. Even if we don't go for the Fury, I think this is a great place to kind of try to bait out a team fight. They're right around the corner, so we should all pull off of this. Kraken's there. We're going to pull off. I think Set stays on it. That's a Mercury ultimate. Mercury's able to get Set. We're able to get the Alpwash. Hades goes down. So we've already lost two of our damage characters. We should not be sticking to this Ardeo. Now we're going to have to run. It's just Sir Nunos and myself. Versus four people. This Mercury is a nightmare to deal with. He uses beads so he didn't get stunned out. And he's able to clean us up. Your middle tower is under attack. Your middle tower has been destroyed. Mercury is definitely the win condition for the enemy team. If this Mercury goes unchecked, he's just going to be able to tear us apart. In our team fights, we need to try to really prioritize Mercury as our focus. Your middle tower is under attack. Your middle tower is Taking a look at the enemy build, Mercury is going into crit. So we're going to pick up Spectral Armor to try to mitigate some of that crit damage. Spectral Armor is going to provide us 65 protections, 200 health, 300 mana, and 10 MP5. It's passive. Critical Strikes only deal 50% bonus damage to you instead of 100. We're going to rotate up mid lane. There's a fat minion wave over in right. We're going to try to help out in left. Mercury is not there, so it's a good fight for us. We're going to ult over the wall. We're able to get the pick onto the RDO. Scotty's running away. We do have our blink. Blink. Hit her with the one. Miss the two. And we're able to clean up the Scotty. Delayed double kill. Group up. Chalk's a little out of position. Looks like our team's trying to close in. So right here is a pretty bad mistake as a solo laner. We should not be the one split pushing. We should be on the front line in the team fight trying to help out as much as possible. We should not be over here in left lane trying to get pressure on a structure. We're going to get a little bit of poke onto the tower, then a mercury ultimate. We're going to use our three. We lose about a third of our health just from basics. We're going to have to use our ultimate to try to get away. Mercury dashes in. We're going to use our three. Once he hits us with a basic attack, we're pretty much dead. We are in a lot of trouble right here. So that was just a huge mistake by us. We should not be split putting. We should not be split pushing as a solo laner. We should be trying to help out our team. On my way. Okay. Quiet. Oops. Cancel that. So let's see if our team engages on anything right here. Doesn't look like it. Kind of looks like both teams have dispersed a little bit. So our thought process for picking up Spectral Armor was to reduce the Mercury damage, but it did not seem to matter too much. I think this is probably not the best item to go into. I think a Mantle of Discord would be a little bit more helpful since Mercury has Haste Katana. Once he hits us with a basic attack, he can pretty much stick to us like glue. 
So what a mantle would do, that spectral would not, is it would stun the Mercury off of us. So he'd have to catch up to us again and hit us with a basic attack before he could really stick to us. Katie's able to get the pick onto Scotty. Very helpful, but while Mercury is still alive, I think we're losing team fights. We set up some wards on Fire Giant. It's three of us, probably four of them, so we're going to start falling back. We're trying to see if we can get any of them to overstep right here. Mercury's back in. Now that Mercury's back out of the fight, it's actually a good fight for us. So now we want to go in and try to fight. We're going to use our three. Hit her with the two. Hit her with the one. Or hit her with the one. Hit her with the two. Or our ultimate. We're going to root her. Apply anti-heal. We get tagged by Alpwash. Set goes down almost immediately from the Alpwash. Mercury's in the team fight. We're in trouble. We're going to activate our three. Try to get the stun. Use our two to get a little bit of a heal. Mercury goes down. It's a good team fight for us. We do have an upgraded teleport glyph, which allows us to teleport to a ward. So we're going to want to back right here. And then try to teleport right back into the fight. Unfortunately, CERN goes down before we can make our way back. So it's a 4v2. We teleported in, but it's not a good fight for us. With just the two of us here. Ooh, risky, Hades, risky. Get a little bit of poke onto the upwash, but we're going to fall back right here. An enemy has left the, game. the enemy chalk leaves, but he does return. It was probably just the disconnect. The gold fury. It looks like Gold Fury is open, but I don't have any damage here to really get it. It's just Kraken and myself. It'll take us a fat minute to get it. We really need the set or the Sir Nunos over here. Ardeos here. We have some good ward coverage. Mercury is over and right. We get some poke onto the Ardeo. We're going to use our 1, then our 2. Alpwash is a much better target than Ardeos, so we're going to start diving onto him. Mercury's here. We're in a little bit of trouble. We're going to stick to this Alpwash when really we should be sticking to the Mercury. That's a misplay by us. We probably could have gotten him. This Frostbound's coming in clutch. We're able to get an assist onto the Alpwash. We need the two. Get some good damage onto the Ardeo. We should probably focus our attention onto the Scotty, not the Ardeo. We're able to get the pick onto the Ardeo. We're going to kind of fall back a little bit. We're going to blink in, use our three. Mercury comes in. We're going to throw our one. Now it's just us up. Mercury alone can solo us, so we are in trouble. And we go down. We should have focused Mercury over the Alpwash whenever we had the opportunity. So now I'm telling the team that we need to focus Mercury. We didn't have any kind of comms. Um, but the video is going to cut out here in a little bit. So what happened was there was about another 13 minutes of this game. Their Mercury was just an absolute nightmare. We got, I think, up to 11 kills ourselves. We died two more times. We made a good defense effort. They were able to get two Phoenixes. We held. We were able to get the two Phoenixes back up. Then they got another two Phoenixes. And then they were able to kind of push in and win. It was unfortunate, but I do think this build, minus maybe Spectral, is very good on Osiris. I also have another build of Osiris up on the channel. I'll go ahead and put a card up at the top. I did manage to record these stats for this game. I was able to finish the game, delete some files to clear up some memory, and then record the last 10-15 seconds of the stats at least, not the game. So at some point here, it's just going to awkwardly cut to the 
stats for the game. If you enjoyed the video, or if you feel like you learned anything at all, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps the video out. If you want to see some more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle coverage and some more guides, make sure you subscribe and check out the channel so you don't miss a beat. These stats will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great time. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.